And welcome back. You're listening to Life Unrehearsed. I'm Matt Del Vecchio. Well, I can't tell you how many times I've walked the hallways of retirement homes and long-term care residences and see firsthand the power of music to put a smile on people's faces, to calm them down, and to generally contribute to their overall health and well-being. Well, it's actually scientifically proven that music therapy can benefit all of us. To hear more about this, let's bring in Dr. Laurel Young. Laurel is an associate professor of music therapy in the Creative Arts Therapies Department at Concordia University and the associate director of Engage. This is Concordia's Center for Research on Aging. She has been a music therapy clinician, researcher, educator, and advocate for over 27 years. Laurel, welcome to Life Unrehearsed. Thanks so much, Matt. I'm so happy to be here today. Well, thank you for joining us here on a Sunday. Uh, I love this topic. And uh, for our listeners, can you define for us, what is music therapy? Well, I've been asked this question many times, Matt. Um, While the term music therapy is becoming more well known, there is still some confusion around what it is. Um, Music therapy is not a collection of techniques that anyone can use, or it's not just about listening to a song to feel better. It's actually a professional discipline, uh, and we have certified university-trained professionals, MTAs uh, are our designation, music therapists accredited, uh, who have a distinct scope of practice that is informed, as you said, by research. Um, So almost all people can appreciate or respond to music. All people are musical in some way. So music therapists capitalize on this capacity to support people, could be in individual or group settings, uh, to participate in music experiences in ways that contribute to their personal development, their health, and their well-being. Um, But no formal background or training is necessary for someone to benefit from music therapy because music therapists work intentionally with individuals' innate or what we might also call their natural musical capacity. Mm. You know, it's interesting, and, and you know, I, I gave that example of nursing homes and, and residences, but, you know, mm-hmm. I would imagine it's multi-generational. Who can music therapy work for? So that's a great question. Um, and when people ask me that, I, I like to say, rather than asking if it works, um, I prefer to talk about how music therapy can help or support people of all ages and abilities to live their best lives. That can be from prenatal care and up to and including end of life. Um, It's not a magic pill, uh, and there are many different ways of doing music therapy. Um, So, for example, we don't ask uh, physiotherapists if physical therapy works, but we might ask them if a particular approach or technique works to address a specific issue. So you could ask the same type of question of a music therapist. Hmm. So music therapists understand unique potentials inherent in music in ways that people may not even think of or imagine. Um, So for me, it's about collaborating with individuals from all walks of life to understand how music can best support them in meeting their human needs or in fulfilling their unique potentials in the present or also as circumstances might evolve over time. Interesting. Listening to Life Fun Rehearsed, Matt Del Vecchio here, and that's Dr. Laurel Young, and we're talking about the power of music therapy. So, Laurel, could you give us a, an actual example of a situation in which music uh, has contributed to an environment or it, where it's improved someone's well-being? Yeah, sure. Um, so having been in the field, as you said, for 27 years, I can think of a, a ton of examples, um, but I'll share a story from my work uh, in dementia care. So there was a man who I'll call Gary, uh, who was in the advanced stages of dementia and living in long-term care. Uh, He spent his day sitting in his wheelchair, uh, head bound down, not really engaging with others, including his wife, Rose, who visited every single day. Um, But she also questioned if Gary knew that she was there or if he knew who she was. So I started using various live music experiences with Gary to see how he might respond, and I invited Rose to attend our sessions. And over the next year, up until he died, Gary confirmed time and again in our sessions that he was, in fact, aware. And perhaps most beautifully, when he would lift his head and look into Rose's eyes directly and sing, Let me call you, sweetheart. I'm in love with you. So music therapy provided Gary with a pathway through which he could engage 
in his own life and with his wife. And for Rose, these connections were really of great comfort to her. And even they had joyful moments in the music together. And she expressed gratitude to me for how music mm-hmm. therapy and even uh, myself as a music therapist valued Gary as a whole person, seeing him beyond his dementia. I love that example. And I could hear our listeners singing along with you, Laurel. <laughs> that is a wonderful story. And, you know, you, you've, I, I absolutely want to talk about uh, the work you're doing. You are the Associate Director of Concordia's Engage, and A-G-E is in capital uh, letters, mm-hmm. uh, Center for Research. So can you provide our listeners with a brief description of what Engage is? Yeah, I'd love to. Um, Engage is mandate. Uh, is to broaden traditional approaches to the study of aging. So we're not framing aging as a problem or as a universal experience, but we're recognizing older adults as a highly diverse group of people who live in diverse communities and in various situational or cultural contexts. So engage researchers, partner with older adults in ways that emphasize their agency and social participation and emphasize their perspectives and their experiences. So our center was actually formed in 2017, uh, but we recently held a three-day public event to launch the opening of our new space uh, on the sixth floor of the ER building at Concordia, the downtown campus on Rugi, and we're really excited about that and, and welcoming older adults into that space. I love what this whole concept is about, and good on you taking a leadership role there. We have to be very quick as we're running out of time, but um, the pandemic affected everyone, and particularly as seniors and older adults, you may be working on a possible project aimed at long-term care homes. Can you quickly tell us about that? Yes, I will. So as you said, this opportunity arose. It was funded in part by the Luke Maurice Foundation. And I examined older adults' perspectives on their participation in online group experiences. And what I can say, without getting into the results, is that I was really surprised, actually, at the potential that these online music experience Um, seem to have uh, to truly engage older adults in either music therapy or music leisure activities, not replacing in-person formats, but actually providing people with more options that might be more accessible or even preferable to some, depending on what the individual wants or needs. Mm -hmm. Um, So out of this study, uh, a new project has emerged, supported by the Grace Dark Foundation, called the Music Friends and Family Project, uh, where online music-centered visits will be facilitated by a music therapist between older adults, probably those in long-term care uh, and their friends and family who are unable to visit. So we'll be looking how this, at how this program uh, might address social isolation and related challenges. Love that. And, and kudos to Luke Morris Foundation and, of course, the Grace Dart Foundation. I'm on the board of Nova West Island and they've been very, very generous to Nova West Island. Love that. Been, I, yeah. I, I wish you the best of luck with that project. I want to thank you very much, Laurel, for uh, spreading the word about music therapy. Thanks so much, Matt. It was great to talk to you today. Thank you. That's Dr. Laurel Young. Laurel's an Associate Professor of Music Therapy in the Creative Arts Therapy Department at Concordia and the Associate Director of Engage, Concordia's Center for Research on Aging. Thanks for tuning in to Life Unrehearsed. And as a reminder, for all your inquiries or assistance with life transitions, elder care planning, and the senior living industry, it would be my pleasure to help. Feel free to reach out at Lianis, L I. ANAS Senior Transition Support. Many thanks to our technical producer, Marco Campagna. Great job, Marco. Thank you. And you can listen to Life on Rehearse here on CJD 800 every Sunday at 4 p.m.